everybody welcome to wing pillow talk another awesome day a day we've never lived in before let our hearts be expectant expectant to see something different if we take the same mindset the same mindset of nothing is working for me everything seems to go against me i have nothing to hold on to and that is your talk this day will come and you will almost receive identical things for you to have a different encounter you need to transform that mindset and transform your speech today i want us to talk about uh as i was just meditating and it dropped in my spirit god had already sent a deliverer to the children of israel in egypt in the form of joseph they believed joseph was dead because they had tormented him they had pushed him out but god was using that push to empower and enhance him. I am not saying the push was easier. Neither did I think that Joseph had a free sailing life. Nothing happened to him. When you read it, you'll see he encountered even much more than what you and I are going through today. But it's our focus on God. Or have you been trapped in acting somebody that you really are not? In being pulled into something that that was never you. As they were sent a deliverer in that format, they didn't know that that Joseph would become their deliverer. They never expected because to them, Joseph was already dead. God has a way that he works with his children. Never allow the situation, the circumstances you encounter or find yourself in to, to name you, to give you a name or to be known by your fallings or to be known by the encounters of life. We have come to believe a generation where we seem to accuse and abuse people from their afflictions. My darling brothers and sisters, let us read the Bible. It is in the place of affliction that God raised a lot of powerful men and women of God. Yes, it is in a place of affliction. When you are afflicted, you're dead to self and you start walking and living for Christ and Christ is able to use you because we were reminded that there are only three spirits by Peter. That there are only three spirits in this world. Three powerful spirits that control the world. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. And Christ was tested in every single one of those areas of life. Yes. In the wilderness. Those who want references, go and read Matthew, Matthew 4. In the world, the, all the gospels carried the wilderness. Satan came. This is a child of God. God himself in the form of man came and said, if you are the child of God, tend the stones. He was hungry. He would have tend the stones. Some of us would have want to prove something to somebody. But he said, no, man shall not live by bread alone. You know, what are we saying? The lust of the flesh Yes, the flesh desire the food. Yes, the flesh wants what is desiring to have. It is not in all cases that the flesh desiring something that will make you end up in sin or will make you end up in hell that you give into. It will entrap you. Satan was not satisfied with that. He took him again even farther and said, see the kingdoms of this world and its glory if you bow down to me i'll give it to you we're doing one form or the other to be famous to to do something you probably desire um, to be known in one way or the other you do things that you need to maintain that to continuously get the followers that you were compromising your, your integrity compromising your quality but guess what? The world these days, the value of human beings, we've devalued ourselves so much. And I was telling a friend uh, recently, I said, when you watch the TV, actually I was speaking to one of my daughters in Europe, and I said, when you watch TV these days, 10 minutes, the adverts all have soft porn attached to it. They're literally selling it for free, giving us for free If and you're drinking it and it's just a matter of time that when you're full with the drinking, you will start to act what you've seen several times on TV because that's a normality. In your mind, it is a normality. Some of the adverts I was telling her, the first time I saw it, I screamed. By the 10th time, 
I started laughing together. Why? Because my mind had been transformed to accept that which they were giving me. I wonder what else they've been pumping to us that we've accepted and gone with the flow. We have not asked God. We have not gone seeking. What does God want in this situation? Uh, is it the prides of life that I am after? If that's what you're after, my darling brothers and sisters, do an amazing job with that. So when hell comes calling, you're able to say yes. You know what? And on earth, I actually achieved. So now let me end where because I contributed towards that. That wasn't enough. He took him. He says, well, now I want you to fall. He take him to, he says, fall. And let the angels protect you looking for fame in one manner or the other that others will see that others will see and know sometimes we do things for others to see and know what we're doing sometimes we encounter and somehow we get trapped trapped in the things in the in the lust of this world i leave you with a question and ponder about it we all sit today and wonder how would hitler encamped a whole nation and start killing people and people were alive and how did that happen history comes to tell us that that's what he when i read father it was actually under the cover of fear when fear has been thrown in front of you for so long whatever is given to you take it as the right thing let no fear derail us or distract us from the thing of god God says, can I do something without telling my children? We're entrapped, we become actors in this world, in one form or the other. The children of Israel, God had already sent them a deliverer, Joseph, to go to Egypt and wait. They didn't, they, the family assumed because they were trying to kill him. I wonder what the affliction you're going through, where people have mocked you, where people have betrayed you, where people have thought you finished. And you yourself, look at yourself, the situation, the circumstances you find yourself in. And you also declare and decree to yourself that indeed you're finished. That's how the children of Israel thought. They sent help, went to Egypt to have food. Of course, the story goes, the brother recognized his brothers and eventually moved them to Egypt. To if a land flowing, we have, they were happy. They had everything going for them. They went to the best of the land. Their cattle, they increased in number. But the same thing that enjoyed, that was um, an enjoyment, the same thing that they benefited, the same thing that they thought they had arrived on, when Joseph died, they became slaves on that land. The same thing that attracted them to Egypt, on that same land, they became slaves. They were tortured and tormented. The same thing that will pull you outside, the lust of the eyes. The same thing you see today. You're looking and everything and you're watching and pulls you in, will entrap you. Once it entraps you, guess what? You start to act. You become an actor with no script. You become an actor on your own, trapped in a prison and acting as though everything is well. But those sitting from the outside can watch your acting skills and smile. If you're a child of God, what you do is smile. The same thing that the children of Israel were benefiting from. They enjoyed it. They lived a happier life. The same thing became a thorn in their flesh. Egypt saw them as a thorn in their flesh. And God removed them. It is so easy for God to heal you. But it is so hard for you to transform your mind to receive that healing from God. It is so easy for God to take away all the Egyptians that we see today. I wonder whether we are willing to remove the Egyptians within us that we have, we have allowed them to eat us. It is so easy for God to bless you, but it is so hard for you to see yourself blessed. It is so easy for God to forgive you and take you to where he wants you to be, but it's so hard for you to forgive yourself. 
Never mind, if you cannot forgive yourself, you cannot forgive others. Today, I just come to encourage you. It doesn't matter what, whatever you have gone through, what situation, what circumstances. Jesus on the cross reminded all of us, it is finished. Nothing that he has finished should finish you if you are a child of God. It says, I was telling a friend recently, I said, please, if you see me fall, don't gossip about me. Pray for me. Ask God to send helpers along my way that they can raise me up to become who I want. It's funny how people hear stories about people and already make conclusions and put them in one corner because our hearts are so dirty, are so wicked that we are not able to see past the error of anyone, the, the error of words of everyone. When I read the manual of life, it says, carry your cross. Jesus himself said, die to self. Carry your cross and follow me. Sometimes we behave as if we are higher than thou. We are holier than holy itself, the word holy. That we have the audacity and the gods to abuse other people from the crosses they have that they are carrying. My darling brothers and sisters, let us be a generation that is remembered for turning things around, for transforming our mindsets, seeking the presence of God and supporting and helping those around us to encounter God. It says, by your fruits, we shall know them. Let your fruits speak more than your words. So how does your fruit speak? Focus on God. Where is your focus? Whatever takes your focus will soon control you. Whatever, whatever thing, whoever takes your focus will soon control you and you'll end up being a trapped actor on earth with no payments. But you already are present within your own self because of the decisions, because of the circumstances, because of situations of life. Yes, the situations will always expose the weaknesses within us. Does that mean when you are, a weakness is exposed, you should stay there? No. It means you should rise up and become a better you. Find out what God has given you, that you can transform yourself and become that which God created you for this generation, for this hour. Let us be a generation who would say, God, this situation, that situation came. By your grace, I overcame it. Let us not be deceived. Deception is breeding on us. Fear is breeding on us. Arise in the name of Jesus and shine for God. Not for man. Not for woman. Not for nation. When you shine for God, every other thing will take its place in your life. I remember, I'll leave you with this. My friends and I are discussing actually the book of Daniel. And I saw how one man who was, had no name, who was not called a man, an apostle, a, a bishop, an archbishop, anything. He was just called Daniel. How he liberated a people that were not even thinking about him. How he stood. And even those around him were conniving and planning to make him sin. And the question was, he could only sin. The only way you can make him sin, sin against his God. But he was also prepared to give his life for Christ. So nothing could make him sin. Not the world, not the systems of the world, not even the things we're following. When we start to meditate on who God is for you and why you are here at this hour, at this time, look around you, see how far we have come. Don't fall. Don't fall for the trick of the devil, my darling brothers and sisters. Be strong and look up to him, the author and finisher. When you offer yourself a living sacrifice, God becomes that sacrifice for you. God will not allow you slumber nor fall. That is if you want to follow him. Indeed, he said it is finished. Let us transform our mind, transform our hearts, transform the things of this world. 
as we carry our crosses and follow him forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Love you guys. Bye for now. <laughs>